here it is. Uh, why am I so excited about this one? Well, basically because it's a real automated charcoal smoker slash grill. This whole automation, I think, is key to the convenience of using this one. But at the same time, 100% bona fide barbecue. Real wood smoke flavor, and that's, that's super important, at least to me. But also you get the convenience of a gas grill. So how, how does it work? Well, this is a gravity feed smoker. Gravity feed basically means that we're going to fill this hopper, which it is, with charcoal. You can use briquettes, you can use charcoal. We light it at the bottom, and then as the charcoal burns, gravity is going to feed it automatically. So there's many, many hours of charcoal stocked up in this hopper, and it's going to feed itself by using gravity. I mean, it doesn't get simpler than that. Gravity feed smokers have been around for a long time. The real interesting part about this one is the fully automated home cook style uh, convenience that you get because there's a built-in controller. We have the grill or smoke area, of course. You have the cast iron grates down here. We're gonna take a quicker look at those soon. We have some extra grates up here for convenience. Uh, and also this grill slash smoker has a bigger brother called the 1050, if you're not happy with the size or the capacity of this. But let's start looking at how the charcoal is loaded and how it's being run. Because I think that's really interesting. So when you open this lid to the charcoal storage you're gonna fill this with charcoal and then we're gonna light it at the bottom now I know that may seem counterintuitive to a lot of people because like every grill you have ever seen you light the charcoal at top not at the bottom but this actually works quite well given of course that the lid is tightly sealed like that so you light it from underneath and the fire is actually gonna keep burning down here because this is where the oxygen supply is not up here, but down here. And that means as the charcoal burns, the glowing embers fall into the ash pan. More and more charcoal are gonna trickle down and it's gonna feed itself. So extremely simple, but really good construction. The big thing about this grill is that it has the built-in controller and a fan, etc. So you can actually set it like you do your indoor oven. Yeah, I mean, this is the first I've seen like at a consumer level grill with this type of automation and convenience. Now looking down the harbor you can see for one there's an insulated gasket here which is good to keep oxygen out and this is what the hopper looks like with a few bars down there that blocks the charcoal from falling all the way down. Now moving over to the well what I call the firebox at least this is where you light the charcoal so you st stick one of those Charcoal starters, lighter cubes, etc. in here. And that's gonna set fire to the charcoal that's resting up here on the grates. And as it burns, you're gonna get the ash collection down here in the ash pan. Moving over to the controller, because this is a real sweet deal. Like a real bona fide charcoal grill slash smoker, but with a built-in controller. That's really easy. It, co it connects via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi if you want to, and you can use that, but you don't have to. Just using this control panel is dead easy. You turn it on, you set the desired temp, adjust it up and down, and Bob's your uncle. Extremely simple. Here we also have four probe thermometers, so you can plug them in and check temps on your meats. And they go in through the rubber grommet right there, so it doesn't get in the way for the lid which is real convenient. The cooking chamber, the one thing, well, the first thing I notice, you can see the long horizontal slit or opening in the back. That's actually where all the hot air and smoke goes out. And I think this is real smart. For one, you don't have to have a chimney at all, so it doesn't take up much space. But also, since this is not located at the very top, that means hot air will rise and then be forced down a little bit and then before it exits. That's good because that means you even out temps in the cooking chamber and we're gonna check that real soon. Also, you have the cast iron grates, which I think is good. As you can see, this one's labeled smoke where the bars are slightly narrower at the top and then you have the other one called sear, with, which is basically flipped upside down so you get the wider uh, cast iron bars. This is good because once you crank it up to sear, uh, your steaks then 
this is gonna the cast iron is gonna absorb a lot of heat and then it's gonna radiate infrared heat and that's what I'm gonna create that nice Maillard reaction so this is a good thing but you can flip it up and down depending on your preferences so real simple but I like simple simple is good and here to the left you can see that's a thermometer probe so this one is constantly monitoring temps inside the smoke chamber and you can adjust accordingly well if we take a look underneath this whole grill you can see right here is an electric fan mounted this fan is like you monitor temps in the cooking chamber and if you need more heat this fan is going to crank up uh, rev up quite a bit and then blow more uh, fresh oxygen to the fire and that's going to cause more charcoal to burn and that's going to raise your temp and then it's going to drop again so this whole controller does everything for you which is super convenient so why should you be interested in this one well most people i talk to they ask me like they want a convenient grill like they really want to do some low and slow smoking etc but most of the time it's like Friday afternoon, you don't have too much time, you just want to grill some burgers or some chicken and get it done fast. So most people choose a gas grill for that. And that's really smart, I think, really convenient. And you, it turns on in like, so you get it up to temp in like less than 10 minutes, which is really good. And some people choose the pellet grill because pellet grills also provide the exact same convenience that a gas grill does, but you actually feed it with pellets, wood pellets, which create that wood flavored smoke you want. Although pellet grills are super convenient, they still they have a very clean burn, which is good. But it's like almost too clean in the sense that you don't get that real smoke flavor you get from a charcoal, low and slow smoked uh, hunk of meat. So this is where this one comes in. For one, you feed it with real charcoal and wood chunks. So you, it's 100% bona fide wood smoke. That excites me a lot. And the second thing is you have the convenience of the controller, so it's all built in. I do this on a regular basis with my kettle, for example, using an external controller like the CyberQ or the Barbecue Guru, or in my case, the fireboard thermometer. Then I have to hook up an external fan, etc., and tweak it. All of that's done for us with the controller. So real wood smoke and a controller. So you have the convenience of a gas grill starts up as fast as a gas grill or a pellet grill but you get real smoke flavor and you can adjust temps up and down as you want just by switching and clicking on the buttons i mean it doesn't get much easier than that and it doesn't get much better it's almost like it's too easy so let's start cooking on this one we're going to fire it up we're going to check temps see if it's even or uneven in temps uh, i mean no smoker is ever perfectly even in cook temps in the food chamber it's just a matter of knowing how uneven it is or if you have any hot spots. So we're going to do a quick check on that, but then we're going to see here some nice ribeyes, I think. Well, enough talk. Let's get this thing fired up. We're going to have some good quality charcoal. Half a bag should be good. Just a bit more. you fill it up take a quick look in the, in the ash pan you see here there are a few smaller charcoal fell through remove these before lighting the fire because you don't want a secondary fire down here not good so I'm gonna get rid of that oh that's better so the hopper is loaded now I'm gonna turn this one on get the temp set uh, we're gonna dial it into 130 Celsius. Roughly. Cool, and now we're gonna get the fire started. Just get a fire starter cube or anything, slide it in here, and this is gonna light the fire right underneath the charcoal. So I'm just gonna leave this for five to 10 minutes, and then we're gonna close the door. Now, an important thing to mention about the controller or the automation is that it has a door opening detectors so the fan is not running while this door or the top door for feeding the hopper is open and that's good all right so we're going to get this started so what about smoke flavor well you can choose an experiment with any type of charcoal depending on your flavor preferences etc 
what's available and that's really good because this one really lets you since you have a fully automated controller you can try different charcoal or briquettes at different cooks and see what you like best except for that you can also add wood chunks and this is where the real barbecue comes in that real low and slow smoked flavor profile when adding charcoal i mean sorry when adding chunks you can do it in two ways you can drop this in right into the fire sorry the ash pan because there's uh, gonna be some glowing embers dropping into the ash pan and that's gonna get these smoldering and that's gonna add some smoke flavor to the food. That's gonna be a mild smoke flavor, uh, which may be what you want or maybe not. If you want a bit of a stronger smoke profile or smoke flavor, I suggest adding these to the hopper. So you add one or two or three in here, interleave with the charcoal and that's gonna give you a stronger smoke profile or flavor. So you have the options, that's really good. Now, since we're gonna do some ribeye cook, like a traditional steak, I'm not gonna to go too wild with the smoke flavor, just gonna get a nice wood-fired smoke, but gentle, and then we're gonna sear it, so. But I'm gonna do a second cook also with uh, ribs, and then we're gonna go full barbecue style by adding these into the hopper. But again, it's super easy. I mean, filling up the hopper, lighting the charcoal, and soon we're going to close the lid and just let the controller do the rest. I really like this. I mean, so many hours I've spent adjusting, tweaking, you know, learning airflow, picking the right flavor, fuels, etc. And this does all all those things for you, just like a gas grill or a pellet grill. Oh, before I forget, pull this out because this is for the air flow to work so you choke the grill down with these but of course you can't use them when cooking all right gonna close the door now to get the controller to get started you should be able to hear the fan kicking in now so now the fan's gonna blow uh, air and we're gonna get this one up to temp real quick. And this is fast. I mean, we're not talking 30 to 60 minutes charcoal, we're talking five to 10 minutes. So we're filled it with charcoal, struck a match. Now the fan and the controller is doing its job. You can see the smoke coming out. So we're getting this one up to temp. As soon as it's up to temp, I'm gonna drop this into the ash pan for a light smoke flavor. Easy peasy. Now we have to prep some ribeye. In order to cook a ribeye, you need to cut out a ribeye. Lucky for me, I've been dry aging this hunk of beef for 30 days, so this is going to be good. Steadily, which is good. Just gonna hook up my trusted fireboard to double check, but should be good. Always good with the reference. Now, comparing the fireboard to the built in one, there is a slight discrepancy, but I'm not too worried about it because the probes are not located in the exact same spot. Just to get, get, to good, uh, get a good reference, but we'll see. I'm gonna add some toast soon, so we're gonna see if there are any hot spots in the smoker. So we're getting up to temp 150 celsius, I amped it up just a bit because I'm gonna do the toast test. Usually I do this with wheat crackers, like in my offset smoker, but I didn't have any wheat crackers, but I had toast. So we're gonna put this all across the grill grates and we're gonna see which one browns the first. Again, no smoker is perfect, but it's good to know if there are any hot spots because knowing where they are means you can utilize that and that's always a good thing. Close the lid, we're gonna give it 10-15 minutes and see what happens. All right, it's time to take a quick look. You know, these are getting just a bit golden brown, but not so much the other ones. But overall, I mean, that's a very good result. Extremely even temps. All right, let's get these out and get some meat in there. 
Actually, I wasn't gonna cook just one, I picked two because they look so damn good. So time to get these two into the smoker. Now, since I am smoking, I'm gonna actually put them on the right hand side. But again, you can flip the grates if you want to. Cook these on indirect heat uh, until they're almost done and then we're gonna sear them. So I'm using the reverse sear method for this. And to get some smoke flavor, we're gonna drop in some chunks right in here. And this is oak I'm using now. I'm a big fan of oak. Okay, we're about 10 degrees away from target temp. So I'm gonna pull these now. We cook them indirect for like 30, 40 minutes. And I'm gonna let them rest just for a minute before we get to crank the temp up on this one and start searing. I should say, and I'm waiting for this to, like, the real good thing I think about resting it for just a minute or two is basically because you want to avoid the carryover heat interfering with your, the actual searing because then temp's going to run up. If you look at the chart or diagram here, you can see exactly what I mean. So cook them on indirect heat, low and slow for quite some time until 5 to 10 degrees away from target temp. That kind of depends on the thickness of the meat. Once that happens, take it off the grill and let it just sit like that outside for five minutes or 10 minutes while this one gets up to temp. And then you can start searing. And then you're gonna hit target temps much easier and you're not gonna have too much carryover heat to work with. But now I'm gonna crank this one up to 300 Celsius. So I'm gonna utilize this left hand side for the sear with a wide grill grate to get some real nice charring and thereby flavor on the meat. So this one came up to temp in no time. It's plenty hot and that's good, so time to get the searing. Now, grill marks are great, but since they taste so much, I want them all over the place. So I'm gonna keep rotating the steak as we go along. Because if grill grates are, I mean, grill marks are good, we're gonna have them all over the surface. So I'm gonna close the lid and then flip them and close the lid, flip them and do that a few times until we're done. Good, it's time to flip. These are gonna be done in like one minute. Nice cook. Oh, this is looking good. One more flip and then I think it's time to dig in. All right, I'm gonna pull them. These are looking real good. Sweet. All right, these are looking real good. I'm gonna slice them up and see. Cooked them just a bit. This, the grill went really hot, but they're looking real good. Nice charred surface, so I'm gonna taste these. I think I got too excited, so cooked these about five degrees hotter than I should. Oh well, nobody's perfect, but it's very good ribeye. And as you can see, this one sears like a champ. That's like the defining factor. Low and slow is super important to me, but having this fully automated cooker, getting a good sear is really important. And you do, because you can see, like when I ramped up temp from low and slow to high, like 150 Celsius to 330, 340, it took like three minutes, did easy. I'm gonna cook on it a few more times. But overall, just pure fun playing with this one. So, what do I think about this uh, Masterbuilt 560? I have to say, I think it's a real joy cooking on. It's absolutely brilliant. The ease of use, the simplicity, like you get the convenience of a gas grill or a pellet grill, but at the same time, real wood smoke flavor, and as much as, or as little as you want. That easy to run, fully automated. I mean, what's not to like? Absolutely brilliant. So good fun, and also if you want a bigger model, there is one called the 1050, so go check that out. Anyhow, good fun cooking some steaks, as you can see it can sear like a regular grill, which is really good. So 
I'm really looking forward to the next cook, which is going to be some Iberico ribs, slow and slow. So then we're going to let this one run for hours and hours. Now, a common question is, of course, how long is the charcoal hopper going to last? Well, that all depends, of course, on the cook temp. If you're doing low and slow or cooking hot and fast, but also how much charcoal you put in it and also what type of charcoal. So I'm not going to get an exact number because it's never going to be exactly right for your situation. But you can refill, of course, uh, just make sure you yeah, open, open the lid and let the fan shut down. Don't peek in right before. And you can only refill if you're doing low and slow cooks according to the manual. So if you're doing hot and fast, get the right amount of charcoal in there to begin with and let it rip. If you're doing low and slow, like around 100, 110 Celsius, then you're good. And then you can open the lid. The lid detection determines that you need to turn it, it needs to turn off the fan and then you can refill. But be careful and play it safe and enjoy some real wood smoke flavor. Thanks for watching and very much thanks to Southside Barbecue for letting me do this video and, and use the grill. Excellent.